Welcome back. My name's Steve and thank you for joining me on my photography journey today. Today we're going to talk about time lapses. So there's actually quite a lot of things that you might want to take a time lapse of. So anything that kind of changes over a longer period of time will work well for this. Um, things like the sun setting, uh, flowers blooming, someone doing some work at their desk, um, clouds moving across the sky, all those kind of things would be good examples. Uh, anything where you can fix the camera in place, take a number of pictures um, over that time span and have something in that frame changing in an interesting way. So this is something that you can easily practice without having to actually go searching for a particular venue or going to a particular event or anything like that. There's lots of things kind of around the house, around your office um, that could make a good time lapse. Uh, for example, you could be editing photos at your laptop um, and just record that for an hour. Um, that will get you moving in the frame and, and everything else kind of stays still. Um, having that camera facing you during that time kind of could be a little bit distracting to begin with, but you'd soon realize that it, um, it kind of blends into the background and you forget all about it. So today I'm going to use two different examples. One of the clouds going across the sky and another one of me kind of working in my office and, and doing that kind of thing. So two completely different subjects. And these are things that um, are going to need slightly different settings in order to make them look their best. So we'll talk through all of that. And what we don't want is for it to become boring for the person that's watching it. The first thing that we need to do is look at our settings on the camera. This is where we need an app to help us out. I mean, we could do it all ourselves, do all the calculations and things, but personally, um, I think that an app like PhotoPills is um, a much faster and certainly more accurate way of working these settings out so that you can just concentrate on what's actually going into your picture rather than the settings you want to use on your camera. So looking at the app, in here is a time-lapse area. If we go into here, we can see there are various things that we can change and calculate. So the basic settings are, how long do you want that final clip to be? How long is that event that you want to take pictures of? Um, when you compile your pictures into a clip at the end, what frame rate are you going to use for that? And how big are the images that you're going to be taking? So from these pieces of information, it will work out how long is needed between each image, how many pictures you are going to take in total over that period, and quite importantly, how much space that's going to take up on your memory. So let's put some information in here and see what information we get back. So I want a relatively short clip. Um, so let's say 10 seconds. We'll take an hour's worth of clouds moving across the sky. The clip's going to be at 24 frames a second as that, that's what I use. Looking at some of my previous shots, each image coming out of the Z5 is roughly 30 megabytes. So let's put that in as well. So as you can see, this means I have to set the camera to take a shot every 15 seconds. And on that memory card, I'll need at least seven gigabytes of space to make sure that I record everything. So let's set this up on the camera and check we have enough space. The first thing that we need to do is set up our image. So once we've got our basics of the composition, uh, so the aperture, the ISO and the shutter speed. So look up here for my previous videos on these three elements of the exposure triangle. Um, and then once we've got that set up, we can then look at the actual time lapse settings. So let's start with the clouds. So now that we've got our image in the frame, um, let's look at the settings on the camera. We need to choose between two different options on the Z5. We've got an interval timer shooting and a time-lapse movie mode. The one that I tend to use is the interval shooting. Um, this just kind of gives me a little bit more control and more options at the end and kind of the output of things. Um, rather than it using the, the filming crop on the sensor, it will use the whole sensor. Um, and kind of the main difference is once we've finished 
in the interval shooting one, we get lots of different separate images. I can then take these into Lightroom, edit them however I want to, and then put that together into the time lapse. Whereas if you're using the movie shooting option, that will give you just a movie at the end. It will put everything together itself and kind of you're very limited on, on the editing options that you've got with it. As you can see, there are quite a few different options on the camera. Let's go through them one at a time so we can kind of be clear of what we're getting and what we're going to do. I just want to say at this point, there's a couple of things that you do need to make sure that you check first of all. Make sure that you've got plenty of space on your memory cards. So I'm just going to format mine now to make sure that I've got a, a whole memory card in order to store these images. And the other important thing is battery. Either make sure that your battery is fully charged or that like I'm doing at the moment, it's plugged into mains power so that it doesn't just suddenly stop shooting halfway through. So our first option, when do we actually want to start taking our pictures? Do we want to start um, immediately? In which case you would use the now settings. So once you've done all of your programming, it will then just start shooting. Or do you want a particular time? Um, so for example, you might want to have sunset or sunrise and you're not going to be with your camera at the time in order to do this so that's when you would program in a date and a time of course make sure that your camera settings for the date and time are actually accurate otherwise you will end up shooting something completely different and be rather annoyed when you come back to it then we need to put our information in that we've got from photo pills so we want a shooting interval of 15 seconds here and we want to take 240 shots to give us that 10 second clip at the end. We don't want the camera to control the exposure um, as we can do that ourselves. When, when we've set up the camera, we, we've got that image looking nice uh, and that's what we want it to look like. And then of course we can edit it when we come back into Lightroom at the end. And one thing that I always do is put silent photography on. Um, if you're taking 240 pictures of you working, for example, you don't want that camera clicking away in the background every time that it's taking a picture. So silent mode on, otherwise it's a real pain. Interval priority gives us some control over, if we're using the auto mode or the programmed auto mode, um, it gives us a bit more control over when that picture will actually be taken. Um, so again, check the video that I made on the semi-auto modes and auto modes so that we can have a look and see what those actually mean. I'm actually shooting this in full manual mode, so we don't actually need to worry about that at this time. Focusing between each shot, um, this is something that you can either turn on or off. It depends what you're taking a picture of. For me, as I'm taking pictures of the clouds this time, I'm going to set my focus to one particular point I'm going to use manual focus actually and this will stop it jumping around and, and potentially having some strange focus in in your time lapse if it moves between different elements so you kind of want to to keep that in one place um, particularly if you've got um, if you've got a building in in your shop maybe that's what you want to focus on and keep it focused to that the entire time you don't want it skipping around there are some other options um, that we we could use, such as auto exposure bracketing, um, or we could create that time lapse movie as well. Actually, why don't we turn that one on? I've not actually done this before, but let's turn that one on. And then at the end, we'll have the two different options. We'll have the interval shooting option and we'll have the, the time lapse movie option. So, so then we'll have a comparison between the two so we can we can look at what um, what they turn out like and then the final option that we've got is where we want to store these images what we want to call them and that's that's kind of it really so I know that when I bring these into Lightroom later on as long as they are in the same folder the kind of in a sequence then Lightroom can deal with that and bring them in so I really care what they're called so let's just leave these as they are now that we've actually taken our time lapse we need to get that information from the camera into Lightroom um, so the first thing that I need to do is take the SD card out of the camera 
pop into my laptop um, and and open it up. Um, I'm using a Mac. Um, everything kind of that I use computer wise is Apple. I think it will work much the same on Windows, um, but I'm not 100% sure. So this is the Mac option. So first of all, open the folder on the SD card. So it's in here for me and you'll see all these files in here. So these are all the pictures that we've taken in this time lapse. So this should be the 240 of them. Just scrolling all the way down just to check. And then we are there. So we want to import these into Lightroom. So go to import and find that folder again. And then we can just untick the ones that we don't want to. And this one is the video that the camera made. So we'll come back to that. Took a few pictures of the fire this evening as well. Um, let's just get rid of those. And then we've just got our ones that we want to import here. So that's our 240. So what we need to do is just come over here, choose where we want to import it to, and then just hit import and in they come. So we need to sync the edits across all of the images. So we do that by clicking this button down at the bottom, just here. And then that way, the, whatever we edit on this one will apply to the others. So let's just have a look at these presets that I've got. I think this one looks best. Just brightens everything up a little bit. So as you can see, that updates it for all 240 images. Then we want to apply any masks to all of the images. So again, this will apply to all 240 of the images, whatever we change on here. So I think the main aspect we want to look at is the sky. So let's just have a quick look. It needs a little bit of work. Not quite sure what's going on there. Um, so if we create a mask for that, which we can then adjust everything. So here we go. And then that will select the sky. And then make any edits to this first image. And then these edits will be applied to all the other ones because we've got that auto sync on. So make these adjustments. Just little bits here and there. That's better. Mm. There we go. And then that way they're all edited in one go. Perfect. So just have a look through the other images just to make sure that because these were automatically applied, we don't have anything that looks terrible on some of the other ones. As you can see, there's lots of cloud in these images and they all look okay. But actually what happened during this was, um, as you can see, the, the sky got a bit clearer while I was taking this. So rather than the nice cloudy sky, we've ended up with not much cloud later on. Oops. So we want to export these images. We want it done as a sequence. So I've got this set up just to name them as a sequence one after the other so that when we do the next step of importing them into uh, DaVinci Resolve, that's when it will realize that they're all in a sequence and that it will make a movie out of it basically. So it doesn't matter what it's called, just export and just takes a few moments to do this because again, 240 exported images. And then we bring that into DaVinci Resolve or any other video, video editing software. Uh, so yeah, Resolve is what I use. Oh, look, it's me. So we'll start a new, um, new project in here. So let's just call it Time Lapse. Okay, let's change that just slightly. Oh. Let's just change that there. Okay. So we've got our new project. So what we want to do is add these files into here. So the easiest way to do it is to select all of these and then just drag them in. And because they're labeled sequentially, they will appear in here as a single video. 
So rather than coming in as the 240 different uh, images, it will come in as one file of all of them together. So it's now a time-lapse movie, so all looks okay there. So now what we want to do is actually export this as a video. So let's name it something useful. get rid of the audio because there isn't any audio so no need to try and save that and that all looks okay I just need to save it to let's just save it to my desktop perfect so just render all and then that shouldn't take too long at all it's only 10 second clip after all and then as soon as that has finished we can have a look at it Okay, so this is the final clip. As I said, with the um, clouds disappearing, it's kind of a bit strange, but let's compare that to what the Z5 created on its own. You can see it's quite a bit darker in terms of the buildings and things, um, just where I've had that more control over things. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you again next week for more on my photography journey. So have a great week. Bye.